CataractCoach.com. Trauma from a shooting cannula. Lure locks can help prevent this type of iatrogenic damage. Now, our guest surgeon here is Dr. Lucio Barato from Italy, and he's presenting the question of lure lock or no lure lock. And so here we go, lightning strikes. This is a video that he produced, and you can see in this case, sealing the incision and what just happened. So the cannula came off the syringe. So a very high pressure that we have there can cause this cannula to shoot off of the syringe. There's another case. And when this shoots off the syringe, it can cause a lot of damage inside the eye. Damage to the iris, to the zonal support. You can get capsular bag damage. You can get vitreous prolapse. And here's another one. Watch carefully. Look at that. That's just deep in the eye. That's almost certainly through the posterior capsule. Now what happens next? So tough situations here. So in that case, in case one, you saw the shooting cannula upon hydration of the incisions. You can look here and see that there's the issue you're going to have now. Looks like some blood inside the eye. Looks like you have a descended IOL. And caps or bag has been damaged. Probably some vitreous prolapse. So here, putting in some viscoelastic, that's a good first step. Let's explore the amount of damage here. So can we rotate the lens and reposition it a little bit? Get that back in the center. Is there vitreous prolapse or do we just have um, intact anterohyoid face? Now here, bring down the pupil with a myotic agent, perhaps. Maybe try to recenter the lens again. And so this is a tough situation here. And it's really important that even if you have a lure lock on your cannula, that you hold it with your fingers when you're injecting 100% of the time. Now, if you've seen our cataract coach curriculum series on the website, you know this is exactly how we teach residents to do it. For young doctors in training, always teaching them to hold on to the cannula tip. That's a very important thing. You can check out our website there and get more information about that. Plus, remember, we even have a free PDF book about cataract surgery you can learn. And now there's the anterior vitrector doing a 23-gauge bimanual anterior vitrectomy. Clean up the prolapse vitreous. The IOL looks to be now in a, in a very stable position. So do a sufficient anterior vitrectomy. Perhaps use some triamcinolone to stain the prolapse vitreous. And you could finish up this case and have a nice outcome for the patient. So now remember this case, case two, where that cannula flying across the eye here. Well, similar situation. You have to explore and figure out what is the extent of the damage now. So obviously you want to be able to prevent this. Look, this is the end of the case. You almost had the case done, just sealing up the incision there. So here in this case, luckily there was no vitreous loss and no damage to the caps or bags. We got very fortunate there. And then let's go to that same case three. That's the one where we had femtosecond laser being used, and then there's that cannula upon hydrodissection goes inside the eye, and let's see what's the extent of the damage here. So injecting some viscoelastic. Now this is tough because it's the beginning of the case, and you still have the entire nucleus there. So removing that femtocapsulotomy um, piece, pulling that out of the eye, and then here you'd be very careful about doing any hydrodissection here. So using a pre-chopper to go along those pre-made grooves from the laser, and then just bringing up the quadrant. So slow motion FACO. I like this idea. Avoid too much rotation or manipulation lens, and certainly don't do any more hydrodissection. You've got to treat it like an open bag. There it is. There's the posterior capsule opening. That's where it's ruptured. You can see viscoelastic being injected as a shield there. And now there's the vitreous prolapse. So you're going to need to do more than just the wax cell vitrectomy. You're going to have to do a proper anterior vitrectomy here. So cleaning up some of the prolapse features, there's the anterior vitrector going inside there. You still have all that cortex to be removed as well. So very important that you clean all that up. Here you want to know the difference in your setting. So anterior vitrectomy, which is position one irrigation, two is the vitrectomy cutter, and three is aspiration, versus IA cut, which is irrigation, aspiration, position two, and then cutting position three. Very important to know the difference there. Here comes the lens. Looks like a three-piece lens. Perhaps placing the haptics in the sulcus, and the optic can be captured um, behind the capsular axis and getting that in a good position. So certainly, you can overcome these risks. Remember, the key is how do you hold the cannula? So how do you avoid this? You really have to hold on to the tip of the cannula. See how it's being held here? That's a really nice demonstration so that no matter what, it can't shoot off into the eye. So every cannula needle should be a lure lock and well-attached. Plus, on top of that, you should be holding it into position just for an added measure of safety. Thanks for watching. Check out all our social media. Remember, we got a podcast every week, including Lucio Barato's podcast and, of course, the Cataract Coach website.